Hi guys, my name is Mike Malloy, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about Waveborn and share my background story about how I became a social entrepreneur. I grew up in Millersville, Maryland, right in between Baltimore and Annapolis, and I've been a Terps fan my whole life. Uh, I did my undergrad studies at Boston College, where I majored in math and computer science. And actually the summer between my junior and senior year, uh, I came down to College Park and did an internship here in the systems engineering department uh, and lived uh, right off uh, College Ave. After completing school up in Boston, I moved back down to College Park. I actually lived here uh, for the first year while I started my professional career at Deloitte Consulting. I spent four years working in Deloitte's technology consulting practice uh, with the federal government. Uh, most of that time was spent on a large project with the FDIC doing failed bank closings. Uh, There's a few of those a couple years back, so it kept me nice and busy. Uh, while I was working for Deloitte, I was also very active in their recruiting here at Maryland and actually came to campus and gave a couple presentations to the Hinman CEO's program. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of come back now and share where, where life has taken me over the past couple years. Uh, while working for the firm, uh, one of the great perks they offered was uh, a part-time master's program that they would help cover the tuition for as well as support me sort of dialing back my client work a little bit so I could focus on getting my master's in computer science. So uh, about four years ago, I enrolled in a master's in computer science program at Georgetown University. Uh, it was a part-time, two-and-a-half-year program uh, where at Georgetown I was able to get a lot of the technical skills that I wanted to learn while my client work. I was in a much more project management role, so I was able to develop a lot of the soft skills, the business skills uh, needed to run a business, learn how, learning how to run meetings, uh, setting out an agenda beforehand, taking notes, uh, following up with action items afterwards, those sorts of things. Um, about two years ago, I got involved with a social good sunglasses company called Waveborn. Uh, so Waveborn was actually founded by Jonathan Schillett. He's a, a Terp. He came here for undergrad and then actually started Waveborn when he started his MBA here uh, a few years ago. So Jonathan uh, self-funded the company from the beginning with uh, his wedding money. He's got a very lovely wife who encouraged him to, to start the company. Uh, they launched in June 2011. Uh, and had a big uh, email newsletter go out with Thrillist.com. So I actually got the email newsletter. I checked out the website. I bought a pair of shades. I said, hey, this is a pretty cool company. They, uh, the sunglasses are made in Italy. And the social good component is really what struck me and made me want to get involved. Uh, so I emailed the, the get involved at Wayborn.com. I had no idea that Jonathan had just started the company, that he was actually based in D.C., but we ended up meeting the next week uh, for dinner. And he hired me on the spot as a second employee. Uh, so for that first year, uh, Waveborn was definitely kind of a side hustle for both of us. He was still had a full year left of his MBA, I was still working full time at Deloitte, had a year left of grad school, and I was traveling most weekends to play on their Club Ultimate Frisbee team. Um, so we learned a lot over that first year, uh, a lot of uh, little bets and sort of seeing what worked and what didn't work, trying new marketing tactics, uh, some social media activity, we hired a few interns. Um, but it wasn't until the following summer in 2012 uh, the company really took off. Uh, so I finished grad school in May last year. I quit my job at Deloitte in June and I moved to Dewey Beach, Delaware for the summer. Um, so that was a pretty great uh, summer. Last summer it really helped us to start growing the business and build some momentum. Um, and this kind of became my full-time job. And in September, Jonathan left and actually went up to Philly for an incubator program for a new tech startup called Betterific that he's been working on full time since then. Um, and we've sort of gone through the life cycle of a startup, which I'll, I'll share a little bit about what that's been like. Um, in December uh, last year, we did our first round of raising money from friends and family. Um, I was scheduled to go out to California for the month of January for a month long trip down the coast. I kind of started in San Francisco. I worked my way down to Palo Alto for a few days, got to visit Stanford's uh, startup accelerator program. I got to tour Facebook's campus, which was pretty cool. Uh, and I made my way down to Santa Barbara, where we met up with some folks at Sea International. I'll tell you a little bit more about our nonprofit partners in a few minutes. And then went down to LA, Santa Monica, Newport, San Diego. I met with several great investors on the trip, as well as retail stores to help sort of uh, spread the Wayborn movement. Um, so as I mentioned, we raised some money from friends and family uh, before leaving. The goal was basically to put together um, enough money to cover the trip and my living expenses for a while. And, uh, thankfully, there's some very generous investors. Um, some of the best advice we got coming out of that trip was to not waste all of our time talking to investors and actually go make more of the product and do a crowdfunding campaign. 
we have a physical product unlike some tech startups and other things, uh, we should find customers and just basically pre-sell our summer inventory. So we spent about two and a half months doing a lot of research, following other campaigns that were successful, talking to a few people who work at Indiegogo, uh, a couple other mentors, and we launched our campaign on April 23rd. Uh, that's arguably one of the best days of my life. Uh, our goal was to raise $10,000 over the 45-day campaign, and we actually reached that goal in less than 36 hours. Um, so that was a pretty incredible launching point for us and for the company. Uh, it really helped validate the business model we had, show that the product was something that people wanted, and really strengthen the core community and the tribe that we built around the company over the first year and a half. Um, so I guess now I'll go into a little bit of background about Wayborn and what we do. So we're a social good sunglasses company. We started with this one model in three different colors. Um, all of our frames are handcrafted in Italy. Uh, we have a designer in Milan, uh, Steffi, who's fabulous to work with. Um, since starting with this one model, we've now expanded to nine different models in 25 different colors. Uh, we can also now, as of about a month and a half ago, offer custom polarized or prescription lenses in any of our frames. So that's been pretty great for us to develop a, an awesome partnership with an optical lab here in Minnesota. Uh, so as we've sort of grown the business, we've also built out our supply chain, um, trying to manufacture the highest quality products while still delivering them in a timely fashion to our customers. Uh, so getting the frames and lenses made in Italy takes about eight weeks to manufacture. Um, but if we get them all over, shipped over with UV lenses, we can do custom lenses. It only takes us about two weeks to get those made and fulfilled. Uh, so that's one of the areas over the next several months and years we look to expand the company um, by offering polarized lenses in all of our frames as well as getting into the prescription eye care uh, industry. Uh, the overall eye care market is about an $80 billion industry. Uh, so we're hoping to kind of take off as much of that uh, $80 billion as we can to kind of help grow the business. Um, so along with the expansions we've made in our product offering, at the core of our business is the social good component. So right now we work with two nonprofits. Uh, we've worked with Unite for Sight since we founded the company. Uh, Unite for Sight is kind of like the Peace Corps for eye clinics. So people will sign up for a year or two and they go abroad to places like Ghana, Honduras, or India and they'll go to a rural village and set up an eye clinic there. So patients come in, never had an eye exam in their life, and they say, hey, you have terrible eyesight. You need two and a half times magnifying glasses. So they'll take a pair of glasses off the shelf, give them the glasses for free, and we stock those shelves with our sunglass sales. Um, very much uh, like the Tom's buy one, give one model. Uh, we're trying to grow the business. We're our for-profit company. We want to make money. But at the end of the day, it's not really about how many pennies and cents are in our bank account but it's about were we able to grow and sustain the company while still giving back to the global community. And that's where I believe the future of entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship is headed um, with the connected society that we live in today. Um, it's not as easy as it was 40 years ago to just make a commercial and put it on one of the five TV channels and blast it out to 10 million people or whatever it is. Um, now we've really grown our business through word of mouth marketing, uh, understanding the importance of storytelling that I want people to buy the shades, love the shades so much that when they go out to a, a happy hour after work or a party on Friday or Saturday, the first thing they want to talk about is, hey, check out these new sunglasses I got. They're really cool. They're made in Italy. They're super durable. And look, it says shades that give sight right on the inside there. And for every pair that they sell, they give the gift of sight. So as I mentioned, we do the prescription reading glasses uh, donation to Unite for Sight. And we also work with C International. That's S-E-E. -E. It stands for Surgical Eye Expeditions International. And what they do is they take ophthalmologists here in the US and they'll send them abroad all over the planet uh, for four or five days to do sight restoring cataract surgeries. So in a typical week long trip, they can do anywhere from 75 to 100 cataract surgeries. And uh, these are patients in the developing world who wouldn't normally have access to this kind of eye care, but we're basically shipping in the experts and they've got all the patients prepped. They have an assembly line that they can go through and do as many cataract surgeries as they can. Uh, so it's been pretty great to add C International as one of our nonprofit partners. And again, that came out of my trip to California in January. I had a Frisbee buddy whose couch I was staying on for a night, and he happened to say, hey, I just started working for a nonprofit. They kind of do a lot of like what you do. Like You should come in and meet the boss tomorrow, and uh, we're able to develop a great relationship out of there. Um, so one of the things, too, as I'm kind of going through and sharing our story, I also want to share what the future looks like. Um, over the next couple of months, we're going to be 
uh, formalizing um, partnerships with a couple more nonprofits. Uh, there's another organization called Resite, uh, and Resite they're uh, founded by a friend of mine that I met, who's also on the West Coast and founded the organization. They're based in India. What they do is they provide eye care to uh, women in rural villages, and they have a program called the Vision Guardians. And basically, uh, after these women either have a cataract surgery or whatever care is that they need, they then train them to provide similar services to the different uh, women and men and children in their villages, basically helping them uh, to perform the tasks, maybe not the, some of the more complicated surgeries, but uh, the simple eye care tasks to help overall and improve the overall health of uh, the members of their community. So we're really excited to, to start working with them as well. And then another nonprofit that we got involved with this summer is called Spark the Wave, which goes nicely with Waveborn. We're kind of sticking with that theme. Uh, um, and Spark the Wave, what they do is they focus on igniting teen volunteers by providing high school students with leadership and community service training. Uh, so they have a week-long summer camp called Wave Week. Uh, they host up at Villanova in Philly. And I was lucky enough to go up and, and give a presentation to them uh, and about maybe 40 or 50 of their upper class students this summer sharing my experience with social entrepreneurship and learning about the community service projects that they're working on, helping sharing some of the, the lessons that I've learned through my entrepreneurial journey and encouraging them to start, start something that matters and really go into their high school and their local community and, and figure out how can they benefit those around them. And that's one of the things that I love about social entrepreneurship is the, the fact that we can start ideas and spread them, you know, and we can use Facebook and Twitter and um, Pinterest and whatever else to allow people to engage with one another, see what their friends are liking and commenting and retweeting on, um, and join in the conversation. Uh, like we have a lot of hashtags that we use um, with Waveborn. We've started using like hashtag find the sun, hashtag ride the wave, hashtag spread the movement, and it's allowed us to really connect with um, our customers, but more than customers, those in our community. We've, we've tried to build a tribe around Waveborn and get people who are really passionate and, and care about helping others to um, tell the Waveborn story to those uh, around them. So that's one of the most important things, I think, as you guys are starting your own businesses and becoming budding entrepreneurs, is really understanding the uh, importance of storytelling and how um, what your ideas and what you're working on can spread to others. So hopefully uh, one of the things they've talked about in your classes is uh, the idea of the elevator pitch. You know, you go to this building and the, you get 30 seconds in the elevator with the CEO going up to the top floor, you got to pitch them on what your idea is. So one thing that I recommend is spend a lot of time practicing that elevator pitch, whether it's about your company or what your background is or trying to get your first job or how to impress a cute girl, uh, un understanding what the story is that you want to be sharing and being able to communicate that clearly and effectively. Um, Orally, I mean, ideally you should have one sentence and then a three sentence version, maybe a five sentence, maybe a full page, uh, maybe a five minute one and a 20 minute one, you know, and depending on who the audience is, how receptive they are, what are they leaning in, what are they interested to learn more about, um, elaborate on those details. So some folks I talk to, they're super excited about the social good component, really want to learn all about the nonprofits. Other folks think, hey, that's cool, but oh, they're made in Italy, like tell me about your designer, like how do you... Uh, manufacture them and get to pick all the colors and that sort of stuff. Uh, when I'm pitching to wholesale buyers of retail stores, they mainly care about the money. Uh, how much do we sell them for? What margin can they make? What are our wholesale prices? How can they get discounts? That sort of thing. Um, so as you guys are, are honing in your pitches, I definitely recommend you spend some time in front of the mirror working on it. Talk to your mom and dad, your roommate, some of your classmates. Literally, the more you give the pitch, the better you get at it. Um, and it's all about sort of those reps and deliberate practice and getting better and better at it.